Stupid. Not a very nice word. I hate it. I hate using it. But I chose it today on purpose. I chose it because I've heard it far too many times from far too many of my students. I once had an entire class who actually called themselves the stupid class. This was a diverse group of learners who were gathered up together because they had one thing in common. They struggled learning math. Who were these kids? There were so many different kids with so many different challenges. It was a very interesting year. Some of them had learning disabilities. Some of them had ADD, ADHD. I had a student who had suffered a traumatic brain injury. We had students who suffered from depression and anxiety. We had students who had hearing problems. We had students who had behavior problems. In fact, four students in that class were the most severe behavior problem in the entire school. I could go on and on, but suffice it to say, it was a group of students who had a collection of labels, and the label they chose to give themselves in my class that year was the stupid class, and I hated it. About a week into class, I can remember my teaching assistant come up to me and she said, hey, Gina, look around the room today. What do you notice about our kids? So I looked around the room and I thought, looks like a full house, everyone's coming in, counted them up. We have a full, everybody's here, I'm so excited, it's gonna be a great day. No, she said, look closer. They're all wearing black. And they were, all 32 kids, they were wearing black. And they did that day, and the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that. It was like black became the uniform for the kids in the stupid class. The stupid class, I hate that. But this is what math is doing to far too many of our students. Far too many of our students who at one time came to school eager and willing and excited to learn, but now believe they belonged in a stupid class? So I knew I had to bring my A game. It was the first year teaching this class, so I came in there and I said, look to the left, look to the right. And instead of the speech I was given, which is 50% of you won't be here at the end of this math class, you'll drop out or fail out, I said this, these are your teammates, these are your resources and your allies, and we are all gonna get through this class together. We are all gonna get through this. Because I knew they needed this course. You see, this was the, the credit they needed to graduate school. And I knew if they didn't earn this, that the doors of opportunity would close for these kids. And you know what happened? We all made it through that year. Every single student passed that course, and they passed the provincial assessment at the end of the year. All of those students had doors of opportunity open. Some of them went on to take higher level math classes. Some went on to college. Some went right out into the field and graduated and pursued jobs that they wanted. But every student's life changed a little bit because they all realized they could learn math. But they changed my life too. And there was one student in particular who had a profound impact on me. You see, when I went in at the beginning of the year and I said, look to the left, look to the right, he put up his hand and he said, hey, Miss C, don't you know we don't care about this class? Nobody does. This is the stupid class. That was the first time I had heard it. It was the first time I heard my students label themselves the stupid class and I hated it and I knew I needed to find the student and have a conversation with him about this. So a few days later, I went and found him and we had the opportunity to have a conversation one on one. And he told me, I don't care about math. I don't care about school. And they proceeded to tell me his plan was to fill his pickup truck with as much alcohol as he could so he could drive out of town, find a field, and drink himself to death. And I stood there looking at him, stunned, shocked, sad, wondering what to say, but then it hit me. He was here, he showed up. He showed up in the stupid class despite having failed this class before twice. He showed up despite being legally old enough to drop out of school without any questions asked. He showed up in this stupid class for the third year in a row because it was the only credit that was holding him back from graduating. He had completed everything else. And if he didn't complete this class this year, he would age out of high school. It was his last chance and he was showing up. And that's when I saw it. The ember of hope that was burning inside him. He needed me to stir the coals and ignite the fire for him and all the students in that class that year. 
So I thought back to a course I taught a few years earlier, where a bunch of students, I see we're having problems, sorry. A bunch of students designed a snowboarding company that they called Big Air Boards, and I watched how excited they were and how engaged they were in that project. And I decided to design a project for this class that would leverage students' passions and their skills and talents. And I said, hey, to this boy in particular who I knew had mad mechanic skills, you know, he was always working on his truck, I said, hey, what would it look like if you owned your own shop, your own garage? You could help people like me out. What tools would you have? What would the space look like? So he partnered up with a buddy and they did a complete business plan. They did all the research, they did a nice pro forma, they modeled it in Excel, they did a 2D blueprint, and I watched him come alive. And it changed my life, and to this day, when I go back to that town, I always look out my window when I go by a particular garage, and I see that pickup truck there, and I get a smile on my face, because I know he's doing what he loves, and I know he's okay. So I decided to go back to school. I wanted to learn why, all, why we don't have all students learning math. I wanted to make sure the doors of opportunity were open to all kids. I found out two really important things. The first thing is, there's no such thing as a math brain. There is no such thing as a math brain. Everyone can do math to high levels, everybody. We're all wired differently, but we can all learn math. The second thing I learned is why some people don't. You see, in the math classroom, we have three categories of students. The first one are students who understand the abstract signs and symbols of math. And they can connect meaning to these abstract signs and symbols. And it makes sense to them. They see it. They get it. These students participate in the classroom learning activities and they engage. In this group of students, we also have some kids who are pretty good memorizers. And if these memorizers don't start attaching meaning, as math gets harder and higher up, they start filtering out too. And we're left with a very small number of kids who are actually doers of math. The second group is called cooperators. Cooperators comply with the rules of the class. They do what they're told. And for the most part, they get by. But are they learning and doing math? No. These students are, for the most part, memorizing what they need to in order to pass the test. Then we have the third group. <coughs> These are students like the kids in the class I was talking about. Students who day after day, test after test, year after year, get messages that tell them they're not good at math, that they can't learn it, that they don't have a math brain. And what they start to do is they start to disconnect. They reject math, and they reject their peers and participating in the classroom. And what does this leave us with? It leaves us with a really small select group of students who actually do math. And that's just not right. It's not fair. Because math is for everyone. Everyone can do math. And everyone needs math. Because early math skills are the greatest predictor of future academic success. The greatest predictor of future academic success. More so than early reading skills. More so than attention. More so than any other factor, period. We know that people who have early math skills are lucky enough to, to have more educational opportunities, more vocational opportunities. They get higher paying jobs. And you know what? It's also linked to, better, to greater job satisfaction. But it transcends the individual. Because people with math skills are actually even more likely to volunteer in their community. On an individual level, math is important because it affects our self-esteem, our self-worth, and our self-identity. But it goes beyond that. It's cultural. Because math impacts the health, wealth, and the cultural vitality of our nation. All people need to do math, everyone. For too many years, math has been a critical filter that cuts across racial lines, socioeconomic lines, and gender lines. We can't stand for this anymore. Math needs to be, instead of a critical filter, it needs to be a tool that creates critical citizens. Citizens that are participants, not observers. Doers, not spectators. That are makers, not consumers. That are innovators, not cookie cutters. People who shape the world around them instead of people who are shaped by the world around them. So what can we do? Well, this is the exciting part. 
there's a lot we can do to make sure everyone has the opportunity to learn math. And the first is teach math through story. Our brains are hardwired to learn through story. We're always searching for connection and meaning. And if we can attach story and meaning to the abstract signs and symbols that we use in the classroom, we're going to engage far more kids in understanding what is happening. What's that operation mean? What's going on with that algorithm? The second thing we need to do is use imagery. Because then we are engaging the spatial temporal region of the brain. And you see there's a big debate between do we need the old math or the new math, but both of those use the verbal linguistic system. And I'm saying, hey, let's add more pictures into math before we even get to the signs and symbols so that kids can build the conceptual understanding they need to learn math deeply. And then they can attach the signs and symbols and become effective math students that are efficient. We also need to engage kids in play. Play is such an important part of learning. It's intrinsically motivating and it takes away anxiety for so many kids, especially in the math classroom, where so many kids feel that anxiety. We know that when we removed play from the classroom, we saw sharp inclines of self-worthlessness, of depression, of anxiety, and even suicide. So it's time to add play back into the equation. We also need to integrate math with other subjects. Math is not a standalone subject where we walk into the classroom and we put on our math brains and we just learn it there and leave it when we exit. It's everywhere in the world around us. It's on the stage I'm standing on. It's in the clothes I'm wearing and it's in the technology in this microphone I'm speaking to you on today. And everybody deserves to see it. So we need to integrate math with hands-on learning activities, like integrating it into science, technology, and engineering, so kids can build and tinker and play and see how math is connected to the world around them. We also need to add arts into the equation, because that's going to remove barriers, and it's going to increase opportunities for kids to engage or get pulled into math. And we know that math is highly connected to music. <coughs> this one's a big one for me, time. We need to subtract time from the equation. Not everybody learns at the same pace, and we don't need to. I think of my favorite basketball player, Michael Jordan. You know, he didn't make his high school basketball team. And if that was a math assessment where I said, hey, you failed, he would never have gone on to be the brilliant basketball player that he was, that athlete we would have lost that talent in the world, but this is okay, this is what we seem to be okay with in math. We shut the doors for kids far too early. When we know that if we just give them more time, we can teach this to them. And we just need more tools to how to do it. And the last thing we need to do is connect. Just like we heard from Rita Pearson, we need to connect the teacher, the teacher with the student and the students with each other, because learning math is a social activity, and students need to talk and work through it. And finally, we need to connect them to the mathematics itself. This is a call to arms. Everyone deserves to be mathematically literate. It's becoming increasingly important in today's world, and the world is moving fast. All kids deserve the tools to plug into that fast-moving society so that they can add value wherever their careers take them. If we don't change the way we teach math and engage all students in math, if we don't give all students access to math, well, that would just be stupid. <laughs>